Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. Today, we are gonna be testing out the biggest flail mower in the series on the smallest tractor in the compact tractor world. I'm always looking to try something new, and so this is a combination I haven't yet done. Want to push the machine to the limits, see if it can handle it. And so we're gonna find out in today's video. As always, I am proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution, We've got them installed on our 1025R. There's gonna be a link down below to where you can buy them directly right from Bora. I'd love to get your feedback too, so if you would, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna join the conversation, leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, maybe a flail mower, maybe something different, check out goodworkstractors.com. Alrighty guys, so it's official now. I am a proud new property owner, 140 acres on the other side of town. A lot of work to do out there, building a barn, building a house. It's gonna be quite a journey. I hope you guys stay around for that. But it was my first chance to actually go work the property. We closed last Friday and yesterday on Monday was my first time to get out there. And I wanted to get at least a little trail mode back to where the house is gonna be out from the road. This has been unmanaged ground. I called it fallow. My brother said that doesn't apply. I'm using that word incorrectly, but it has been unmaintained for a long period of time. A lot of just all sorts of growth. You know, there's big stuff, there's small stuff. There's a little bit of everything out there. It was awesome. I loved it, but I wanted to try out something different. And so I had the biggest flail mower in the Funny Top series. So it's 62 inches wide running on a subcompact tractor, 25 horse engine horsepower. Okay. 18 horsepower at the PTO. So I would never run a 60 inch brush hog. I'm gonna tell you why, but I ran this 62 inch flail mower and it was a totally different experience. So I do have a two inch wide bore wheel spacer. So it adds a total of four inches. It's about 52 inches overall. And they do make a 52 inch model of the funny top mower. Again, this is 10 inches wider, 62 inch. And so you're gonna have, this is the standard setup how it comes you can offset this. You can offset it either way. There's uh, five positions, and so you can offset it a little bit further out to the right, or you can even bring it back to the left if you want to. I just chose to run it in this position. I didn't have a need to get underneath any brush at this point. We are going to, I'm gonna do a little trimming just around the back edge of the property here, and I'll put that in the offset, the furthest position out uh, to the right, so you can see what that's all about as well. So in my opinion, unless you have a reason to offset it, it's best just to leave it right behind your tractor, kind of center the load. The stability of having the additional width with the spacers, I think helps out kind of manage that, uh, you know, it's a little bit offset, right? So it helps manage that load a little bit better as well. All right, I wanna get back to why I would run a 60 inch flail mower, but only a 48 inch brush hog. And the main reason is gonna be product weight, attachment weight, along with the position of that weight. We're gonna use round numbers because that makes things easier. So let's just say 60 inch flail mower versus a 60 inch rotary cutter. This flail mower weighs about 420 pounds. A 60 inch rotary cutter weighs about 600 pounds, so about 50% more. But you can see just how close to the three point hitch this entire flail mower is. That keeps everything more compact, right up tight to where it has more lift capacity, the ability to manage it a little bit easier. With a brush hog, you are way out here. Typically, you're about seven foot out from where it connects to the three point hitch out to the tail end on the trailing wheel. So typically, when you look at the ratings online, Take a measurement from the connection points on your three-point hitch, 24 inches out, that's where they're gonna give you a lift rating. So if you go beyond that, that's really gonna diminish. So it's a lot easier for the three-point hitch on these small tractors that have limited lift capacity to manage all that weight up here, but you're gonna struggle. I've put a 60-inch brush hog on one of these small uh, subcompacts. It doesn't matter the brand, they all have a limited capacity, and they just simply can barely get it off of the ground, enough to probably mow, but that weight's also going to, as it shifts, because the three-point hitch moves a little bit, it's really gonna throw around the operator because these tractors are not that heavy either. Now to be transparent, a flail mower is always going to cost more than a brush hog, but there's a lot of benefits that come with that. So on any subcompact, John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, it doesn't matter, you're gonna run a 48 inch brush hog. So we are looking at running and successfully running a 62 inch wide flail mower so you get a lot of extra width gonna reduce your time, gonna make everything go a lot quicker. It's also gonna be a lot more compact in nature compared to a brush hog, probably three or four feet shorter overall. And so that's good for several reasons. Number one, it's good for storage. Number two, it's good for trailering. And number three, it's good for maneuvering. And so not only do you have the additional cutting width, but you also have the ability to offset it this way or that way so you can reach under hard to get to areas instead of having to back up you know, time and time again with a brush hog, you can just mow right along those edges and tackle it a lot easier. 
So some fun dimensions. Let's just see if you have it roughly set up with the left side of the tractor, uh, as close as you can get, you're gonna have about eyeballing it 14 inches of overhang over here on the right side. But let's see if we can figure out what the maximum overhang is. I'm pretty curious to know. gonna have about 21 inches of overhang now so that added on roughly seven inches so increase it about 50 percent so not quite two foot if you went to the complete outside you're almost to 24 inches out but your cutting blades start another inch or two in this way so this looks a little goofy like it's really falling over but the intent for a flail mower is to ride on that back bottom roller so in the cutting position that's going to be on the ground. So really the only time it's going to be kind of offset or, you know, cantilevered like this is when you are in the transport position. So don't let that fool you too much. It's going to ride on the ground while you're cutting. So there are two cons to flail mowers compared to brush hogs. In my opinion, number one is the cost. They're going to cost more, but that comes with a lot of benefits. And number two is that these offset versions are not quick hitch compatible. The reason for that, I recently discovered actually by way of a stump grinder that was also not quick hitch compatible, is the fact that the PTO shaft, what you see, needs to be able to really shift a long ways left to right, and oftentimes the quick hitches restrict that amount of movement just too much, and so you don't get the full range of motion that you need. That's the reason they're not compatible. And it's also worth noting, my brother actually mentioned this, that it is actually a very quiet operation while you're mowing. You know, if you're hitting a rock or we actually, uh, we found a new tool that the old owner left behind with pickaxe. We ran over this and that made a little bit of a racket. But on that note, we were actually using Y blades out there and I thought I was gonna be just fine with the Y blades. I'd been out there a few times. It turns out there was more woody material that I was mowing than I anticipated, which makes sense given how long the property had been unmaintained. Um, and there was grass underneath. I, I saw plenty of that underneath, but a lot of woody dense stems in there that I wasn't anticipating. So we did one pass on most of it. We made a couple passes in a few different areas just to see how it would do. But one pass took care of 98% probably of everything. And there'd be a random stem or stalk left over here or there. Uh, some really smaller, maybe two foot, two and a half foot tall scrubby um, pines or maybe they were cedars. I'm not sure what they were. The Y blades didn't do a very good job unless you pretty much just sat right on it and let it chew it up. So we could have taken a unit with hammer blades out there as well, which is if you are, you know, you have a lot of shrubs, a lot of dense undergrowth that you know you're gonna be tackling time and time again. But for this application, the Y blades were good because we can get out there, we can tackle it the first time, maybe have a little bit of leftover stuff here and there, but that property is gonna be managed and maintained from here on out. And so you're not gonna let it get to that point. The Y blades are gonna do a, a cleaner job overall on very light grass and weeds compared to the, the thick, stemmy, woody material. So if you had a lot of areas on your property or maybe different properties, you're gonna cut once a year or new properties that have never been mowed before, I would probably go with hammer blades. They're gonna be a lot beefier, um, but they're gonna not leave as fine and clean of a finished result. There's been a lot of folks actually that are using the Y blades on these flail mowers to not only take care of their fields in the back, but also mow their lawns on a weekly basis. That's how good of a cut these Y blades will do. Now Del Marino, they're out of Italy and they have a lot of different series of flail mowers. This particular series, the Funny Top, is designed for subcompacts and small compacts. It does not require any additional hydraulic or electrical hookups. It's category one, three point hitch compatible, a standard 540 RPM rear PTO, just all the standard stuff that these modern compacts and subcompacts have, but they're also built accordingly as far as the weight goes, the gearbox, everything about it so that it works just like it should, but it's important to keep that in mind because so many of the flail mowers that are out there are designed for larger machines and we offer those. So I've done some videos with them on my big four series tractor that have all the hydraulic offsets and you can tilt them and, and everything else. And there is a funny super version of this mower as well, but it's gonna weigh more. It's gonna require hydraulic hookups. And these are pretty manageable to be able to shift them left to right. And they're gonna be the cheapest cost as well. You start adding on hydraulics and that really drives the cost up.
So this is again the new home of Goodworks Tractors and our family as well. We are going to be building a barn out here and a house and you know transforming the land. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a ton of projects with different attachments and tools and just give me the ability to try out different things in different scenarios, do a lot of stuff I've never done. So I know a lot of you guys are in the same boat and it'll be a great opportunity for me to learn, for you to learn, and for a lot of you watching that have done it before to shorten our learning curves. So it's about 140 acres, give or take, in total. The north side is gonna be bordered by a pretty good-sized pond, 50 or 60 acres, about 4,000 foot of shoreline along there with a little bit of wetlands on either end, on the east and the west. About 40 acres total of open field or, or pasture and meadow. The main chunk of open area is gonna be about 25 acres and then some smaller pockets throughout. And then the balance is gonna be all mature hardwoods, um, some conifer and, and pine mixed in with a lot of elevation change from the lowest to the highest point. It's about a 70 or 75 foot difference. And so the first step was just to take a flail mower out there just to mow some trails. We were gonna meet with our architect out there at the building site and just try to have an easier access because there's a lot of thorns and prickers and everything else in the field as it is. We just wanna have a little bit of a clearing in an open area. So I will be coming back out with, I believe a 10 foot bat wing uh, mower from Rhino. I'm gonna put that behind my 4720 to take care of all of this entire open area, all 20 or 25 acres. Gonna have to bring in the skid steer with my mulcher head as well because there's a lot of big autumn olive and other shrubs that are really overgrown that I wanna uh, tackle and get under control. I really wanna just reclaim this property, clean it up, and then manage it from there. Alrighty guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you do join me on the journey, but if you like this video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. If you wanna see more videos, hit that subscribe button down below. And again, if you're looking for a flail mower or something else for your tractor, we can probably help. Check out GoodWorksTractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.